بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدنا علما ورزقنا فهما وجعلنا من الراشدين الحمد لله وشكر الله Welcome to another um, episode of the Afia Chronicles and Alhamdulillah Today uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Firiel de Jong who is a TIB doctor uh, practitioner doctor uh, based in Cape Town and alhamdulillah we've had the um, privilege of knowing her since um, a long time now 2016 at least or yeah or 15 even 14 it keeps going back yeah and uh, so alhamdulillah she's someone that's uh, attended the Afya healing workshop uh, qualified as a certified practitioner and alhamdulillah has been able to um, incorporate a lot of the techniques uh, that uh, you know she's learned along the way. So alhamdulillah, today's uh, session is understanding the link between Tib and Afia healing, inshallah. So with that, I welcome uh, Dr. Firiel. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm Shukran good. I, I'm, I'm, I think I must have excited for this finally uh, to be happening and. Um, I think from, from your side, I must I'll be honest, also I said that I was a little bit nervous, which I don't know why, because I mean, this is something, you know, and, and Afia healing, it's something that I do on a daily basis. And Alhamdulillah, I've been, I feel that I've been able to do the two, um, to use it together in a, in a way that has actually been effective over the years, Alhamdulillah. Absolutely. Um, so just give us a, an intro as to your uh, background in your studies, when you qualified and then how long you've been using it and, and then when exactly did we meet? Yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> when did you do the workshop? <laughs> yeah, it's been, when you say 20 something, I'm like, has it been 20 years? <laughs> like, no. Feels okay, like so, it, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so Alhamdulillah. So I initially, I, um, I studied at UWBC in complementary health sciences. And this is basically, a, it was, it's a BSc, a Bachelor of Science in that. Um, and then graduated and did the degree in United Medicine, which was really the clinical modules and then looking at um, diseases and, and how to treat diseases according to the United philosophy. Yeah. So it really went, really went into, to merging the anatomy and physiology, and then um, looking at obviously trying to incorporate the United philosophy, which Alhamdulillah, at the time has been, um, it was fulfilling, it was a, it was a good thing. Um, I, I felt that I had made the, the right choice, Alhamdulillah. But then, you know, as you go on, um, and as you start practicing things, you, you notice that there are, I want to call it gaps, but I, I also feel like it's, it's it's well let, let's call it ease of reference let's call it gaps um things that we maybe wanted to improve on and you know as 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 teachers i always tell my patients that the teachers and, and clients our clients often teach us what we know and what we don't know mm. and so one of the first things for instance it was um pain management because at the time i was doing a lot of cupping um, I absolutely love cupping therapy now, but at the time, it, it, that was also something that I needed to learn my affinity for. Um, and then I found that, you know, there are certain conditions where you can't be doing cupping in. And then um, I was, at the time, I was exposed to, to Reiki and to other modalities because I've always had an interest in a vast number of other natural healing modalities, but didn't quite always fit within the framework of his time. And so, you know, you go there, you experience certain things for yourself and you, um, you, you go in with a bit of caution and so on. And then I, I, I got to a point where I basically wanted to incorporate these other modalities that I was studying and that I was looking into. Um, and that is how I basically got on to, to Afia healing. Mm. So um, initially, as I said, in terms of pain management, that was a, it was a good, um, a good filler there, so to say. But then when actually doing the Afia healing course, and, and this comes to when we had met and also how, um, when I actually did the course. So I officially did the course in 2015, the, the workshop in March, 2015, but we had met and I'd been with the Afia group since 2014. And that was actually according to some of the questions that I had. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was emailing you or something before the time relating to some of the modalities that I was exposed to. 
and questions because at, at one point I just I felt like you know this is something that I want to do for my clients and I think I'm, I'm going to make the differentiation here because I actually haven't been for the past almost three years now I haven't actually been working as a United practitioner lots of people call me Dr. Fidel they know me as doc um, and so on but I haven't strictly been working as a United practitioner as such um, and, and in fact I've, I've recently I've, I've started saying that I've moved away from them, but in reality, it's not. Yeah. My yeah. healing has actually brought me deeper into them. Yeah. And and so I've changed the way of actually saying that because, you know, in, in terms of, of Afia healing, and besides in terms of the, the tools that we're using, you know, I normally talk about my Afia healing toolbox. Um, and I mean, you, you often see, and now some of our supervision groups and so on, I often use this word too, because in reality, that's what it's been for me. Afia yeah. healing has been this toolbox and so, okay, so I have this diagnosis now and what can I use for that? You know, so, so um, and, and you know that every case is different, but when I did the, the actual course, and I think if I, if I just think back on the first, when we did the workshop, it was over three days. And I remember the Friday sitting there and I had so many questions. Today, some of our um, classmates that did the course at the same time with me, we actually laugh about it because the, the one, um, the one elderly man, he said, he sat there and he thought, oh, this young doctor, she's asking so many questions. She, you know, is she challenging? But in reality, it wasn't about challenging. I mean, you you know me, you know that it's not, I mean, I ask a question, it's not to challenge you, mm. it's for me to have an understanding because yeah. even with natural medicine, you know, we, we, we tend to have this approach in terms of there's the body, there's the mind, there's the emotions, there's the spiritual, but... I, in my own experience, I didn't see much of a varying of all of these different um, facets of, of the being. Yeah. And then yeah. going into the learning and, and uh, meeting with other teachers of uh, within natural medicine, but not necessarily within your nani too, I then became exposed to Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah's work and how they actually speak about this, the mind, the body, the spirit, and how it's all intertwined and how it cannot actually be separated. Hmm. So as you no, the more I was, I was learning and the more I was meeting new people, I was realizing that my set of way, my construct that I had, it wasn't answering my questions anymore. And, and something, I mean, if I, if I just think of the first day of the IPL course, the one thing that stood out for me was, first of all, that Friday, I was super calm. <laughs> I don't know if it was all because of the learning how to breathe and, and all of that, but and the one thing that stood out to me is right at the basis of what Afia healing or what anything is, is energy. What is energy? You know? And, and so on the one hand, as natural medicine doctors or practitioners or whatever we want to call ourselves, we look at one, what is something that, what, what is it that maintains health? And on the mm -hmm. other hand, we look at what is it that breaks down health? So you look at causes of disease and so on. Yeah. One yeah. of the things, for instance, um, food, such as uh, our diet. If we look at food, we think of an, of an apple. So the, the famous saying of an apple, an apple a day keeps the doctor away type of thing. That apple, one, can be really healthy for me, but it can be really unhealthy for someone else. And this is what Yunani teaches us, mm -hmm. right? So in terms of temperaments, in terms of the, um, the qualities of the foods and so on. So we know that is Yunani tip. But then how does Afia healing and the teaching, the philosophy behind Afia healing, how does, where does that come in? That teaches me that the essence of that apple is what is important. Because that apple has been as a natural resource from the earth as created by Allah, broken down, the essence of it is energy. Yeah. You know? So, and this is why I'm saying that it's, it, it's I... Um, after doing the course and, and working in the way that I was working, I initially I said that I was moving away from them, but in reality, Afia Healing was bringing me back to Afia Healing, back into the reality, but seeing it and doing it in a slightly different way. So how was your practice before Afia Healing? And then once you learned it, how did that change your approach and practice with your patients? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you so much for that question, because you know what, I, I was actually thinking, um, you know, there's a, there's a video that you shared with us on the Medicine Hospital. 
Um, remember where this where this man was um, yeah. they were doing they were they were chanting this thing something like wow so yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. So, you know it's done it's done but I think it was a great Baden Baden video or something yeah but I remember when I watched that video one of the things that actually that I thought about was at the time when I did the Afia healing I was working I, I was employed in other words and so in that the setting that we that I worked at we use medication as a form mm. of healing and bringing about balance to the body and all of that. And so we would have our lifestyle factors, which I think we can expand a little bit later, inshallah. We had the lifestyle factors and then we had medication and so on. When I went on to working on my own, one of the things that I never had, and up until today, I still don't have it. I've never stopped medication. I think for 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 about a year because um, because many of my patients and clients were were using black seed. I actually stopped black seed, and literally that is because the black seed, um, the the owner of it basically. I think he approached me and he's like, you know, do this, and I'm like, okay, it's something that I can keep. Let's stop it. But up until today, not that I'm against medication, I think it it would make things easier for some of my clients and so on. But the point that I'm trying to make is that with the tools of Afia healing and the other things that I've been able to, to incorporate and work together, Alhamdulillah, we've actually been able to put together a treatment pro approach where you can use your lifestyle factors and then yeah. use yeah. your own things. And so literally like for instance, a prescription, a prescription for instance, where you would go to an allopathic doctor. And so my, one of my colleagues would for instance have a prescription and say, um, use ibuprofen three times a day, da, 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 right? And so that would be on the prescription. On my prescription, which I would be giving to my clients and my, my uh, previous patients and so on, on that prescription, it would be saying something like, doing do this type of exercise or ground yourself in the morning. Yeah. Um, it's using natural resources. And the beautiful thing about it, alhamdulillah, is it's actually free. So it's, it's things, but it's free. But on the other hand, and I think you and I and many other people can, can attest to this also, it requires discipline and you need discipline. to do it. Yeah. yeah, you need to do it. And I think this is where people fall short, even with allopathic medicine, you know, where they've been given antibiotics. You know, the, the, hardly ever people will actually run through the full course and finish it off. You know, let alone telling everyone to breathe for five minutes a day or, you know, go and do grounding on a daily basis. Yeah. And this is something that I think, you know, at the end of the day, people are looking for a cure, but people aren't disciplined enough to actually see it through. It's a process that ultimately, you know, and, and there's no such thing as a miracle cure. Medicines don't cure you just miraculously, and nor does alternative healing. It's, it's a process that's required for you to, one, change your mindset, change your lifestyle, and actually go through the necessary changes for you to shift in your state of awareness. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the challenge, I suppose. Yeah, and you know what also said, you know, you, you're talking, you're bringing up two points that I actually want to touch on, each other. And the one is, um, is time frames, right? It, it's time frames in order to, to bring it, and, and also processes. So if you think of a bowl of wool, right? And the analogy that I use is, is wool, because I think not only because I love knitting, but besides that is that if you have a bowl of wool and you allow that bowl of wool, to unroll. Notice how quick it is for that roll of ball of wool to unroll. Mm. Okay. And then you think of that same ball and you need to roll it up. In order to roll up that ball of wool, it either takes the same amount of time or sometimes even more because in the time that that ball of wool gets untangled, yeah. it gets tangled, you need to untangle it and you need to roll it up again. Yeah. So in that for me is a sign that when you all when you go out of when you you know and, and um, sorry and if, if i if i just look at at what disease disease is an imbalance right and so in order for you the time for you to go out of balance you need to allow the time to actually go bring back yourself into back into balance again um the other point that i wanted to mention on also was um was beliefs you know Beliefs, you said, you know, in, in, when we're doing things, um, when we're doing certain practices um, in order to, to overcome a disease or so, 
very often we actually need to do certain things such as affirmations or using certain tools from the emotional healing side um, um, of our fear healing. And I think it's, it's also important is that if, if anyone is watching this, um, who's maybe not familiar with our fear healing itself, I think it's important for us to notice that there is these two branches of it. And the one branch is the energy healing, as we are mentioned in terms of pain relief and so on. Relief, yeah. But the other one is the emotional healing. Because it's often the emotional healing where you have that set of tools, so to say. Yeah. Um, and this is where we need to work on our beliefs, mm. on our perception of things. And, and often trying to have that shift in, in mindset in order for us to actually bring about that state of healing. Yeah. Each other. Absolutely. And I think yeah, that's what's important ultimately, isn't it? Is to understand that Afia Healing provides a toolkit, like you're saying. And then to be able to pick out and choose what's needed. So in your case, Alhamdulillah, with your, um, with your understanding and knowledge with uh, the way that you diagnose ailments. Okay, now normally with, with a normal tip practice, walk us through what would happen like if, if, if I came to you with um, psoriasis or something like that, what would you have done on a natural a tip sort of trajectory? And then if it's Afia healing, which way would we have gone? Or let's, let's choose maybe something that's more common IBS. Let me use a real example. I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you a real example that I used when, um, when I worked. I think it was in my third, second or third year of working, for instance. I was seeing a lady, um, and, and at the time I worked in a, what we call it in Cape Town, we call it the, the township actually, Langa. It's one of the oldest um, townships in, in, in Cape Town. And um, I loved the, I worked there and I, and I actually loved working with the community. And I had this lady, I remember she was a Kosai lady and um, she had come to me with recurring an issue of, of tonsillitis. You know, she had it for many, many years. Eventually she actually had the tonsils removed but she still had throat sore. And I remember sitting, now remember at this time, this was in my second or third year of working, which was like 2012 or something. So at the time I didn't, I didn't do the Apia healing cause yet. I was spending quite a bit of time with her. And what I realized is that as I was talking to her and I, and I, I could understand that something wasn't quite placed because in terms of things self-care, certain self-care things that she needed to do, that was seen to. She was compliant with the medication. She was fairly healthy, alhamdulillah. She was, she was okay, but something wasn't quite place. And many, many months after her seeing, so because I spent most of my time when I worked for that particular company, when I worked there, I actually worked most of the time in Langa. And so I would see my same patients. Um, they, would, they were my patients, you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so I saw them and the one day, you know, as the conversation went on, I asked her, um, how are your relationships? Are you speaking? Are you expressing yourself? Right? Mm. But now remember my terminology and everything at the time, um, it was it was really basic. I mean, it, and, and like I said, I, I had an idea, but I didn't quite know what was happening. Long story short, this was somebody that was actually being abused and she wasn't expressing it. That's right. Yeah. It was sitting up there in her throat. It was clogged up, but I didn't know how to use it. I knew that something was wrong, but I didn't actually know. Or in fact, I didn't know that there was a way to actually go about it. Because as I said earlier on, I, did, I wasn't seeing that um, connection between the emotions and the physical body. Another real example, for instance, and I mean, if you, if you think of how right now what's happening in Palestine, I have gotten to, to a point where it's not to say that I've shut off, but I've learned to distance myself from it in order to self-protect yeah. and to protect my own mental health. But I remember when this whole shift, uh, the whole things just started now recently, the whole the new buildup of things. And I, I thought about the case that um, I'd worked with many, many years ago before doing Afia Healing. It was a little boy who started wetting the bed. And this uh, family that I, I mean, the, the boy that I worked with, his family owned a house in the area that they were living in, which was not one of the safest areas. 
And he owned, they owned another house in another area, nearby area, that was a better area. So for financial reasons, their family actually decided to sell the house that was in the better area because they get a better price for it. And they themselves would then move into the house that was in not such a good area. And I remember when this uh, mother brought him, I think the boy was about eight, seven or eight years old. Initially, I thought, okay, separation is anxiety. Um, is he afraid of his teacher? You know, like the normal questions that we would ask in a, you know, would he street take him, in other words. And all of that was clear. Um, I think at the time we probably had an idea of what could possibly be happening. Then, as time went on, now remember if I look at it again, uh, as well, you, you asked her, how I was practicing before and how am I practicing now? Mm. I always spent more time with patients, right? Not because I was slow or whatever the case, the case may be, but because I wanted to know, and, and generally, I mean, it's, it's good practice to be talking to you and, and having an understanding, building rapport and that type of thing, right? So in the conversation, this child actually mentioned that he wets the bed, and it's not only when he's sleeping, when it starts raining, right? Now, up until this point, it made sense. Because when you hear water running, you might feel as if you want to use the toilet and so on. Mm. His mother mentioned that there was one night when they were sitting there watching TV and she had actually scolded him because she said, you know what? He is, he's too lazy, he's too much into the TV, he doesn't get up and he wants to use the, the bathroom. Long, let's cut to, to the end of it as well it is, what he then had a memory, and now again, remember, this was not in a, in a session of Afya healing because I didn't know how to do it at the time. What happened was, in the area that he lives, they have flat roofs. And when the gangsters shoot, they basically, to get a better view, they get onto the roof. And what it then happened was, it was early part of the night, in summer, not in winter, and he, as a little boy, was still playing outside. And they, the, in the area, they started shooting. So the, an aunt of this boy ran in and he said, stay inside, stay inside, they shoot him. And he was inside the house. And as the, the, the gun uh, fired, they fired, the shell of, the bullet, of, the, of the, the bullet fell on the roof. And this aunt of him said in some kind of exclam exclaiming way, um, oh my word, they're on the roof, they're on our roof. So this was a memory that had stuck with that child. And when it rains, because remember you're coming for obvious reasons, it's raining on top of you, it brings back that memory. Yeah, it's triggering it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, I was drawing the correlation to, to what is happening in Palestine because it's raining bullets. But you, you understand what I'm saying? So, so we know that is there, but now at the time, I knew it was there, it was, a, it was a trigger, it was something that was, it was an emotion that was locked in there. Um, but now, alhamdulillah, we now have the tools to be able to actually work with that um, type of case, yeah. Alhamdulillah. And so how has your practice then changed? Like you said that, you know, you're using more and more of the Afia stuff. Is there, um, okay, so I'm sure, you know, there'll be people watching who are, you know, affiliated with TIB as well. Yeah. Where are the similarities then? Yeah. Okay, we've had this conversation a few times, but we've never really fully had it in this sort of a way. So where are the similarities? And does it go against the whole grain of what Tib is teaching? Or does it just flow along with it? It's actually, like I mentioned earlier, it's actually given me much more of an appreciation for you, Nanita. Yeah. Because, you know, one of the concepts, for instance, is... Um, we look at this concept of Pisces, right? And Pisces is the, 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 it's a, a concept that basically tells us that if you cut your hand, your hand will heal on itself. Why? Because your hand has been made with a program by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal itself. Yeah. So we are always going towards healing, yeah. right? And in your Nani term, I mean, five, we, this is what we use. We use Pisces as, as the term within Yunani Tub. In energy healing, it's exactly the same. So in a practical way, let me just answer this in a, in a practical way, because 
In our fear healing, for instance, if we call, we do what we call running the energy, right? When we run the energy, you do use your intention that by the power of Allah, healing takes place in this body. But you as the practitioner or the person doing Afia healing, you don't know what needs to happen. The body needs to do. So we rely on body intelligence. Yeah. So again, as I said within your Nani I mean your Nani tip, there's the concept that is there and everything, your lifestyle factors, your medication should be designed in such a way to support your body's natural um, capacity to heal itself. Afia healing then just comes in with a, with another tool or a way of actually supporting um, yeah. supporting that. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that's the other thing, isn't it? Um, in, in your sort of approach, there would be more of a diagnostic where you're understanding what the client is saying. You There's an intake uh, process yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. and, and Zoe, that's, that's, a, that's an important point because we've been talking about tools now. Up until now, we've been talking about tools. In other words, we already have a diagnosis. But yeah. now let's look at diagnosis. Because when you when you are, are dealing with and or you, or you have the knowledge or the, the background in terms of looking at how the emotions plays a part in it, your diagnosis does actually change. Yeah. As an example, for instance, somebody would be sitting on the other side of the table and they would say, I'm experiencing this chest pain. And so you ask the question, the relevant questions, um, when did it start? How does it feel? Describe it to me. Um, if you press on it, is it so? Whatever the case may be, because now, this is before you're examining, doing your physical examination. At that point, you're trying to have an idea of, of what's happening. If you bring in some of the teachings of Afia healing, you would then be asking, is this an emotional pain? And again, you go back to, because remember your chest, it is, it's, it's the area of your, your heart energy center, yeah. your heart yeah. chakra. So it's normally related to things of your nearest and dearest, your family, your loved ones. So you ask them, did something happen recently? Or at the time of the, or the onset of that, of that pain, uh, what was happening in your life at that time? And in having this type of conversation, we can actually really often have an idea of where this is coming from. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, you, so your, your way in which you see your diagnosis changes, mm. actually. Yeah, and I think that's one part of it. But, you know, like for someone that is not trained medically, okay, yeah. because we get a lot of people, you know, coming to the Afia Healing Workshop and then wanting to go out and help people. The beautiful thing about our technique, Alhamdulillah, is that you don't need to have that medical understanding because once the energy is passing through, the body knows what to do with it automatically because yeah. the body knows that it has to heal yeah. and that the resources that are then ultimately sent to that part that actually is in need of that healing. Yeah. Yeah, and no, no, this is exactly what you said. This is something that we see all the time. Very often I would, I would look at some of, the, um, some of the group chats, for instance, and so what often happens during the day, messages come through and at some point during the day, I just catch up or browse through. And it, it's actually very really evident, but it, it's interesting to see also, because remember, I'm coming from the whole diagnostic background. Thing. Yeah. But the, the majority of our, our fear practitioners are not from a medical no. background. I mean, you know, we've got these teachers, there's many, many other prof yeah. professionals doing it. Um, and the interesting thing is, and it's actually quite, it's quite a beautiful thing to, to witness it, because you've got the set of tools, that's your issue, you deal with it, you rely on ultimately, yes, on that to heal the person or to bring about the healing, but you're relying on the body's ability and you're relying on your skill. Because, and I think this is something also, this is something that, that I find particularly in Cape Town, uh, because there are so many other modalities, natural healing modalities that have overlaps. You know, yeah. it, it is actually a skill that you need to learn to be able to do. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, then, and I think it comes with, with the experience. As you get exposed to more and more people with similar situations, then it just becomes, you know, it, it becomes like a sixth sense of how you're going to be able to read it and deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, it, it, yeah, it does. It, it does boil down to your experience and, and how much time and effort you actually put in to understand that whole science of it. And, and literally it is a science because it can be broken down. It can be understood. And really, yeah. we have to look at it as a holistic um, way by which we deal with it rather than just individual components, like deal with the pain, then send you off to a psychiatrist to check your mind, then send you out somewhere else for another scan. And, you know, it's 
in the in, in the allopathic sort of uh, sphere, you know, it's just people are being thrown pillar to post. Yeah. And it was amazing yesterday. I spoke to a young man, you know, who's in his early thirties, and he's you know gone through so many different forms of cancer, and you know he's had bits and pieces of his stomach removed, his part of his pancreas and part of his, you know, and and then Subhanallah, this, and then he was cleared of it. Okay, then he was sent home um, in January. He's told, okay, it's come, it's back again. And this time we can't do anything because we've taken so much stuff out of you. We can't deal with it. So they got my number. They, you know, the, the father spoke to me and then I, I said, okay, let me speak with him. And when I spoke to him, I said, look, the way that I would look at this is to understand what exactly has been happening in your environment that you have not been able to digest. And because now the cancers actually come and sat on the liver, that is known as a seat of anger. What is it that's angered you over the past for so long that you've just been holding on to and it's been poisoning you, you know? And then again, you know, and, and again, he had his questions, you know, and he's very sort of um, scientifically grounded. So, well, where's the proof of this? And where's the proof of that? And where did you get this from? And is there scientific evidence behind it? And well, you know, everyone has problems. So why, why is it happening to me? And that's valid as well. But again, you know, understanding mizaj, the temperaments, and it's so important to understand that environmental factors can have these impacts upon us. You know, and, um, you know, we make dua that inshallah he's able to um, open up to this understanding because once we deal with the triggers and the root cause of the emotions, all these ailments and diseases that manifest are simply symptoms of what we are holding on to ultimately. And is that how you also see it in your side or? You know, just on, on that case that you were saying, I think something that comes to mind is the uh, vibrational match, you know? So, so I mean, cancer is a very different condition to, to something that is infective, um, such as the flu or coronavirus in that we COVID-19 COVID type stuff. I think it's, it's also important that if you're looking um, at I mean, you're looking at the organs, right? And so you look at the liver, for instance, um, and the emotion that is often associated with the liver would be anger. Um, the bladder, kidneys, fear. The lungs, grief. Um, the heart, excitement, then, and so on. So this is something often that people will ask, so where do you get this from? You know, um, how does it actually affect that? And so what we would know is that um, in terms of, of uh, in terms of, of vibration and 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 you know in, in energy medicine we, we may be looking at as as vibration but we're looking at it in sense of a in the sense of, of you being susceptible mm -hmm. to a condition so as an example for instance you can have five doctors working in one facility and in this facility you have an influx of patients with um, with the flu coming in the ones with a, with a strong immune system will not, is not likely to be getting the flu. They're all infected with it, but the immune system is so strong that it actually kills off the whole part of yeah. the whole yeah. But if they do get it, their symptoms will be really mild, yeah. um, but yeah. they, it will affect the parts of the body that is the weakest already. That's right. You know? So, I mean, these are also things that I think is, is important that in terms of when we're speaking about cases, we're speaking to patients. Um, it's, it's important concepts that we that I think it's important yeah. for us to be mentioning um, to them. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So closing, inshallah, just any closing remarks with regards to this overall topic that we've been discussing? Because I know there's so many different little topics I want to dig deeper in, yeah, inshallah, in, in, in the coming episodes. Um, but something, inshallah, that we can leave our audiences with um, of how they can actually look after themselves holistically from a tip perspective, but also how it overlaps uh, from our fear side as well. Yeah, I think the biggest, the biggest thing in, in terms of from your narrative and also from our fear healing side is, you know, one of the things that we often, you often speak about within our fear healing also, is the concept of mindfulness, being present, um, and then also taking account of ourselves at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, and, and this is so, I feel that this is so important because you know, in, in Unanita, we have, as you've mentioned, the Mizaj, we've mentioned the, this concept of temperaments. Very often I will speak about temperaments and it seems as if I'm speaking against the temperaments, but in reality, I'm not. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, when you when you look at, at the temperaments, for instance, you would be told that a 
phlegmatic sanguinous person such as me um, needs to act or needs to be in a certain way, you know? Yeah. In the one way, it's, it's good to have these type of guidelines and follow the guidelines. But on the other hand, it's also important for us to know where are you at um, as an individual, you know? So, so practicing being present, being aware of your feelings during the day. So many times people are, have road rage or they have outbursts. So why? Because there's an underlying triggers that happens continuously during the day. And then something small happens and an explosion happens. Explosion. Right? So, so what I'm saying is that it's, it, I believe that it is so important for us to know who are you as an individual, not an individual or a temperament, a person as a temperament individual with the temperament and bringing in, taking at the end of the day, taking that account of how was my day? How did I, what did I do? How can I do this better the next day? Because as we know also the Nabi Muhammad said, said that no two days should be the same. Mm -hmm. One, the, tomorrow needs to be better than today. Yeah. So let's be aware of, of who we are, what are our triggers, what foods are good for us, what foods are not good to us. Very often yeah. we also rely on the practitioner to tell us, you know, I want you to eat this, that, and the other. But in reality, and, and very often when, when my own clients and patients get sick, I will tell the children get sick rather, I will normally tell the mother, you know what, allow the child to eat what she wants to eat at that time. Because they, again, coming back to the body intelligence, the body knows what it needs to heal. Yeah. yeah? And I think, I think that's, that's very important, yeah. As the famous saying says, goes, um, the body knows what it needs to heal, but the question is, or the, the trick is to get your mind out of the way. Yeah. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair, mashallah. That's been amazing. And inshallah, um, we'll be sharing this out soon. So, alhamdulillah, we look forward to any questions. If anyone has any questions, inshallah, then please uh, fill them out in the, uh, in the chat box. And uh, inshallah, in upcoming episodes, we will try and answer those also. So, jazakumullah khair for your time. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salaman ala al-mursaleen. والحمد لله رب العالمين لا شرف نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين بنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المكذوب عليهم الضالين آمين جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم